Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to the Shopperoni. Um, I was gonna just hurry and put this shock together and not bother filming it, but um, I've got some friends that need kind of a little overview on how to bleed a rear shock, so I'm gonna go ahead and film this. Um, sorry for the background noise, it's cold and snowing outside Utah again today. I've got both heaters in the garage going. <laughs> And I've got music because I can't function without the tunes. So, anyway, there's a couple things I want to show you. Right here, um, we have Kalani's shock shaft. We're going to start putting stuff together on that. I don't have Rojo in the house tonight. He's out working, so i got to just stack the camera on a tripod and hope for the best. But I wanted to show you one quick thing about... Um, uh, Kalani had his suspension done by Go Race before they do WR stuff. I think they're a reputable company. I don't know them very well, but they put their own proprietary piston in the uh, rear shock, and I think it's a good design. I, I think it's good. It's legit. Um, what I want to show you, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's a very open design on the compression side, which are these three big long slots. Um, it's very open, and it's chamfered right here. You can't really see it too. There you can see it a little bit. It's chamfered to direct the oil in past the, shim, the, uh, the shims. There's no steps in it, so the compression side can be very plush with this type of piston. And if I flip it around, you'll see the rebound side. And you can see the steps right there. I don't really like steps because it creates buffeting, but it's a more open design than what the stock piston is by a long shot. So it's actually still going to be really pretty good. Um, in a perfect world, that'd be a nice, smooth radius, but we're not going to worry about that. This is far superior to the stock one. So, um, and then uh, I've kind of changed the shim stack a little bit. Um, I've got all those written down. Um, I won't go over too much detail about that right now, but let's go ahead and assemble this shock shaft. I'm going to talk my way through it. Uh, for you in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, my homie Joe, um, this is basically what you're going to do as you put your uh, 350 back together. Uh, first thing I want to go over is a shock oil. Um, I valve all of my rear shocks to use a three weight oil that's very, very light. I like that because it's more plush. I'd rather stiffen things with shimming than use a thicker uh, shock oil. So. Basically what we do is we just get a little greasy, so we're in the shop, get a little lube on your finger. Oh, if Rojo were in the house tonight. We're gonna lube the shaft up a little bit. Now we're gonna put a new rubber bumper. His other one was trashed. Just slide the rubber bumper on first. And then the dust cover. The dust cover goes next. And then we're gonna put on the seal head. Now, if you want to, I've done hundreds and hundreds of these. If you want to, you can buy the little uh, sleeve that goes over the top of this to make that go on smoothly. There's another way. You can actually use a Teflon tape and wrap around the steps on this. I've actually lightly filed the edge. I know you can't see it, but there's a, from the shaft that comes up right here, there's a little edge, and I just chamfer that edge ever so slightly with a file so I don't rip the new seal. And uh, make sure you have copious, copious amounts of shock oil and on your seals and stuff. That's a new seal head. His other one was blown. This is a dust seal and there's two seals inside. And this little rubber thing right there that you can see kind of protruding ever so slightly is a bumper. What I do is I just gently slide it over the shaft and then I just kind of work it around, slowly add a little pressure down and usually we'll just slide right on. Just take the time. Don't need to hurry. Take the time. Oops, <laughs> just took it off, had it on. Okay, 
There you go. It should have a little bit of drag. It's normal to be sticky. It's not going to slide. If it slides down, you got problems, okay? That means it's too loose. Maybe got the wrong size or something, but it should, it should have stitching. I mean, it actually requires a bit of effort to slide it down. And then uh, if you did your own shimmy, you're going to know the order. But basically, the thicker shims, the compression shims are always down because when the shot goes up, that's the compression stroke. So the big, bigger diameter shims go down. That's the, I'm sorry, that's the uh, compression side. The top's the rebound side. There will always be a thick washer underneath the bottom to hit the bumper. So that goes on first. Now normally I assemble all of these shims one at a time on here, but I've already done it once, so I just put them on, uh, putting them on in mass. There you go. So now, just make sure everything looks right. And then we're gonna put the nut on. Now the nut has to be Loctited. You have to Loctite this, or you can stake it, but if you ever plan on taking it apart again, crap. Let's get, try to get a little bit, there we go. If you ever have to lock, uh, ever have to take it off, then you have to grind the thing off again. So I use medium Loctite, uh, medium thread locker. This is from Permatex. You can use Loctite brand. I don't really think there's a big issue with either one, but. And uh, relatively clean finger. And then uh, on the thread you go. I really like the paste better than the liquid, but I ran out of the paste, so I used what I got. And also do the nut as well. And then uh, you're gonna just well, hang on a second. I gotta I gotta spread this Loctite out a little bit evenly, or it's gonna just come off. Uh, this one's a 17 millimeter. It's a torque specification. That's about right. <laughs> Done hundreds of these. I don't even set up my torque wrench anymore. There, yeah, it looks good. Let's show you what it looks like. There we go. Compression shims on the bottom. Rebound shims on the top. Nut open. This is where the bleeding comes for your uh, rebound side. New seal head, dust cover, bumper, and she's ready to go back in the shock. So this is part one, assembling the shock shaft. Uh, hang tight here, and we will do part two, which is assembling this back in to the shock body, which is right here, and filling with nitrogen.